We are back with video six in our six part series on how to generate more leads with no cold calls. Today we are talking about strategic alliance partnerships. That's right, you connecting with someone else to work with the same customers and mutually benefit from that process. Today's episode is the sixth video. That's why we call it episode six in a six video series. That's right, it's number six out of six. If you haven't watched the first five videos, please follow the link down in the description and watch the other five videos because we have given you a clinic on no cold call lead generation. What we're talking about today is how you can leverage relationships that other businesses or partners have with clients to make them part of your client community. And we're going to show you how to do that today. In fact, let's take a look at what you're gonna discover in this video today. The first thing you're going to discover is what a strategic alliance partnership is. It sounds really fancy, it's not, it's really simple. The second thing you're going to discover is the advantages of strategic alliance partnerships. You're going to discover the advantages of having a strategic alliance partnership or multiple strategic alliance partnerships. The third thing you're going to, to discover is how to approach prospective or potential partners. How to approach potential partners. That's number three. Now, there's a fourth thing I'm going to share with you at the end of the video, and that fourth thing is a fast action strategy for getting new clients. So if you're just starting a business or you're going through rough times in your business and you need to get cash in the door quickly, this particular strategy, which involves strategic alliance partnerships, is going to be huge for you. So make sure you stick with me all the way to the end to see the fast action strategy. If you are joining us for the first time, welcome. Absolutely great to have you here. I hope to see you back here every day. We post a new video every day at 5 p.m. We post a, an interview at 12 noon on Thursdays each week, new interview every week, and I want you to be notified when we do these things, when we post new videos, post behind the scenes videos, or post an interview. So be sure and subscribe and ring the bell to make sure you get notifications. Hit that subscribe button, ring that little bell to get the notifications so that you and I can stay connected at all times. I am honored that you're part of our community here. Welcome and thanks for being with us. Okay, let's get right into strategic alliance partnerships. And we'll start with the first thing I told you we would discuss today, and that is exactly what is a strategic alliance partnership. This is a fancy name for when you and somebody else, another business or another individual who's in business, get together and target the same audience. My preference for strategic alliance partnerships is when you connect with someone who already has a client relationship with people and they endorse you, they share your information, and they even give their clients the benefit of your product or your service as an add-on to their service or as a gift or at minimum a joint marketing relationship. Let me give you some examples. And I'm going to do my best shrink into the box once again. Here we are. Okay. So if you take a look over here, you will see the first example, and it's a very common one. If you've ever been to a Barnes & Noble bookstore, you've probably gotten coffee at the Starbucks that was inside. Starbucks is an independent business, Barnes & Noble is an independent business, yet Barnes & Noble and Starbucks have an agreement where Starbucks opens restaurants inside their bookstores. Starbucks also does a strategic alliance partnership like this with Marriott hotels. They don't rent the space from Marriott. They provide Starbucks coffee in some Marriott's for in-room consumption, and they also provide Starbucks coffee stands out in the lobbies and in the common areas of convention space. These are strategic alliance partnerships. You're a customer of Marriott, you're a customer of Starbucks. You're a customer of Barnes & Noble, you're a customer of Starbucks. Starbucks and Barnes & Noble have teamed up to share you as a customer. And Barnes & Noble has endorsed Starbucks coffee by having them in their stores. 
Marriott has endorsed Starbucks coffee by serving it in their in-room coffee, serving it in their restaurants, and then allowing you to buy it in their convention areas of their hotels. These are strategic alliance partnerships. So how can you as an entrepreneur or you as a salesperson benefit from strategic alliance partnerships? Well, look at the second bullet point over there. You'll see that it's a wedding photographer and a dentist. You may think to yourself, these businesses are unrelated, but they're not. When someone buys your top level wedding package as a wedding photographer, it also includes teeth whitening for the bride and maybe the maid of honor. And the bride and the maid of honor will go for their free teeth whitening to the dentist that the wedding photographer recommends what are they gonna do? They're gonna take the entire wedding party with them. The rest of the wedding party will pay for the teeth whitening and the bride and the maid of honor will get it as part of the service that the wedding photographer provides. So the wedding photographer and the dentist are sharing the client. Let's look at the second example that I gave you, the custom clothing haberdasher. I love that word, haberdasher. It makes me sound so sophisticated. The custom clothing haberdasher and the dry cleaners. You spend $1,500, $2,000 on a custom tailored suit or $3,000, $5,000 on a custom made suit. You don't want to take it to just anyone to clean it because a bad cleaners will destroy that suit. So the custom clothier offers you three free dry cleaning visits to the dry cleaner of their choice and they have trained that dry cleaner on cleaning fine fabric. So they trust the dry cleaner. You bring that suit to the dry cleaner. What else are you going to bring? You're going to bring your shirts. You're going to bring the rest of your clothing that need to be dry cleaned. You're going to go there three times because you've got three free visits along with your suit and you're not going to switch because that clothier trusts the dry cleaner. You're going to trust the dry cleaner too. Let me give you another example a financial advisor and a trust and estates attorney. So you start to make a little money in your career and you don't wanna spend it all, so you need to figure out how you can put it away for retirement. So you go to see a financial advisor and the financial advisor sits down with you, he looks at your entire portfolio and even if you're 25, 26 years old and your entire portfolio is just saving for retirement, he says to you, when you get married, who's going to inherit your money? And you say, well, my husband or my wife or my spouse or my partner. And the financial advisor says to you, how can you be sure that'll happen? And you look at him or her. He says, let me introduce you to my friend who's a trust and estates attorney. They will create a simple will for you. This will ensure that your finances are well taken care of when something happens or if something happens to you. The financial advisor and the trust and estates attorney work together, and that is considered a reciprocal referral relationship. Now, because they refer business back and forth and they trust one another, they decide they're going to go out and do seminars together to people who are in their late 30s or early 40s and in the middle of having families. They're, they have two kids and maybe they're having a third. These people are prime targets for both financial advisors and trust and estates attorneys because they're starting to establish a significant net worth. So they're going to team up together because they already have a reciprocal referral relationship and they're going to do joint seminars. That is a strategic alliance partnership. The two of them are going to go out and they're going to do breakfast events or lunch events and they're going to educate the people in their marketplace on how they can help them preserve and protect their wealth. Now, some of these folks may be the financial advisor's clients and they're meeting the trust and estates and attorney for the first time. Some of them may be the trust and estates attorney's clients and they're meeting the financial advisor for the first time. But they're opening up their networks to one another so they can work together to grow. They're adding value to one another's network. The final example I'll give you is the event planner and the travel agent. Event planners work to do conventions. They put on conventions for their clients. They handle all the details. What they usually don't do is they usually don't book airline reservations. And in some cases, they don't book hotel reservations and they never book car rental reservations. 
Travel agents, however, do all three of those things. So event planners and travel agents can target the same market. The event planners' clients can become the travel agents' clients. The travel agents' clients can become the event planners' clients, and vice versa. These are some great examples of strategic alliance partnerships for the sake of developing new leads through marketing with joint events or just by sharing one another's database and endorsing one another to each other's list, to each other's database. Let's discuss now some of the advantages of strategic alliance partnerships. The first advantage that probably is obvious to you is that you get access to a new market. If you've never had access to people who are getting married before and you're a dentist, the wedding photographer is opening up a whole new world to you. And this is a world that you're going to be exposed to with very little effort, just through developing a relationship with the wedding photographer. The second advantage is trust. The trust the person has in the partner that they have a relationship with is huge. Well, because that partner is now endorsing you, that trust is passed right through to you. And a barrier, a hurdle is overcome for you just by being endorsed by the partner that you have created as a result of this strategic alliance partnership. The third advantage to strategic alliance partnerships is that you can exclude competitors. You can make this relationship exclusive. So let me take you to the example of the financial advisor and the trust and estates attorney. Financial advisors get business from a lot of different places and they may receive referrals from 15 or 20 different trust and estates attorneys. But the trust and estates attorney that does the best work and the one that they get along with the best and the one that they have the strategic alliance partnership with is the one that's going to receive all the referrals because that's their most prized relationship. So you can exclude competitors from working with some of the top people in the field, whether it's a formalized agreement or they just like you better, they just trust you that much more. So strategic alliance partnerships are a way to continuously get in front of the people who are working with the best professionals in the industry today. The fourth advantage to strategic alliance partnerships is that your clients run into switching difficulties if they decide they don't want to work with one of the two partners. Now, it is not something that is designed. You can't design your partnership so that clients are prisoners of yours. If you don't provide great service, if you don't provide value, people are gonna flee from you and they're gonna do whatever they have to to flee from you. But if people just want to casually switch because someone has walked in and pitched them on something new, they're going to find it difficult because then they have to uncouple that partnership and only work with one of the two people. There's also going to be guilt associated with it. It's not as easy to walk away from someone who's a partner with another provider as it is to walk away from someone who's a sole vendor. So there are switching difficulties associated with strategic alliance partnerships that help keep people loyal because it makes them think twice before they take a new offer where they're being given something for free for a month just to try out a new service. It eliminates that, hey, try this out for free for a month person who's going to switch just for the free stuff. The next advantage that I wanna cover with you is, of course, you're gonna get potential referrals. Your strategic alliance partner is going to do a joint marketing event with you. He or she is going to write endorsed letters on your behalf and mail them to the list but they're also going to be out there giving casual referrals to you for your service to evangelists from their network. Let's take the example of a CPA who works with a transactional attorney. The CPA is out having coffee with one of his clients and his client happens to be a distributor of parts for, an automotive in, for the automotive industry. And the automotive industry sa in, distributor says, hey, Mr. CPA, I need to recommend someone to my brother-in-law to incorporate his business. Who do you think I should use? And he says, oh, you know what? I'm gonna tell you, I would use Joe. He's one of my strategic alliance partners. I do presentations with him all the time. He's the best. You get that connection and it's a referral from a strategic alliance partner to a friend of his who's an evangelist. And that evangelist is going to spread the word about you. 
Your strategic alliance partner is emotionally invested in your success. So he or she is going to recommend you to people who will recommend you to others. And this sounds complicated, but this is the way word of mouth marketing works. If you're a strategic alliance partner with someone, you're going to double or triple your chance for getting referrals. The final advantage that I want to discuss with you today is potential passive income. Potential pass passive income means people sign up for your partner's service and your service comes along with it. I work with a company called Heartland Payment Systems. I work with one of their senior relationship people. He's an executive with the company. And Heartland works with point of sale systems dealers. So when you go to a restaurant and you order your food, what the server punches it into is called a point of sale system. Built into that point of sale system is a credit card processing service. Heartland has strategic alliance partnerships with these point of sale dealers so that when you go to pay at the end of your meal, Heartland processes the charges. It's seamless to you, the consumer, but that is passive income for Heartland because everybody who checks out in that restaurant goes through the Heartland payment system. That passive income is amazing. And regardless of the business you're in, you can set this up so that you take care of your strategic alliance partner and you will receive passive income just like this. So those are the advantages to strategic alliance partnerships. Let's talk now about how you can approach potential partners. The worst thing you can do is walk up to somebody and go, hi, my name is Joe and I think we should be partners because... I want to make money from your clients. Horrible. You need to approach potential partners as if they were potential clients. You need to walk up to them and say, hi, my name is blah, blah, blah. I work in this industry. We have several customers in common. And you talk about the customers you currently share. Talk about the clients you currently share. You should have arranged in advance for these clients to serve as references for you. And you say to the potential partner, I would like to add value to your client relationships and here's what I'd like to do. And then you offer to do something that that partner is going to make money from for free for them. Here's what you do. You're a dentist. You go to the wedding photographer and you say, Mr. Wedding Photographer, I want to give you 100 teeth whitening passes for free that you can use in the next three months. The next 50 weddings you photograph in the next three months, I want you to give these free teeth whitening services to the bride and the maid of honor. Give it to them for free. And I don't want anything from you. In fact, I'm going to hand out flyers for your photography services to everybody who gets teeth whitening just because I want to promote your business. Now, what are you doing? You're telling the wedding photographer that he's got something worth $1,000 because teeth whitening is $500 per person that he can give out as he sees fit to the next 50 people he shoots weddings for. And you're going to hand out his flyers, and he's probably going to get some people to sit for portraits as a result of you handing out his flyers. In three months, you're going to go back and you're going to say, hey, I've seen you know 35 of your patients. Um, I'm really glad that we could do this together. Let's talk about how you and I can get together and do seminars on how to do corporate headshots the right way. I will talk about how to have a winning smile in a corporate headshot, and you can talk about how they should sit, what they should wear, and we can work together to go into corporate offices, and I can offer my services, you can offer your services. That's a strategic alliance partnership. But you started the relationship by giving that wedding photographer something for free so that he or she could see the value that you provided. That's the way you approach a potential strategic alliance partner by demonstrating that you have their best interests at heart first and then working on the partnership afterward. And notice, I didn't say go back in a week. I didn't say go back in two weeks. I said wait three months after they had seen that you were in this for the long term. And that's the second element. The first element is deliver value first. The second element to approaching a new partner is to be in it for the long term, to show the partner that you want them to be successful 
for the long term. The third and final element in approaching a partner for a strategic alliance partnership is to help them see that you're loyal. You can't be seen working with other people in their industry while you're trying to develop a partnership with them. Now, I know this sounds crazy. You think you're going to cut off your nose to spite your face, and you'd rather work with five photographers than just this one. I'm not saying that you don't work with those people. But what I don't want you to do is I don't want you to put it in the other photographer's face. I don't want you to put it in the face of the partner you're trying to develop relationships with. People can refer you business all day long and you can say thank you and you can send them a reciprocal referral from time to time. But if you're trying to develop a strategic alliance partnership with one partner, you can't include somebody from that industry in your advertising. You can't go out and do an endorsement where you appear on their website, where you appear in one of their ads. You can't be seen endorsing someone else in their industry while you're trying to develop a partnership with them. After you develop the partnership with them, if there's a way to differentiate between them and somebody else, maybe there's a service they don't provide that another provider does, or it's a geographic difference where this person works in one state, this person works in the other state, and they're not licensed to work in each other's states, that's fine. But loyalty is the third element in a good strategic alliance partnership because you want to get all of the people who are eligible to work with you from that person. So you should be giving them all of the people who are eligible to work with them from your business. All right, now I told you there was a final strategy, a fast action strategy for new clients, and that was gonna be a bonus that I was gonna include at the end of this, and here's the bonus. If you're just starting in a business and you've got no clients whatsoever, and you wanna get started, or you're desperate for cash, and you need to jumpstart your business, this strategy is for you. What I want you to do is I want you to make a list of everyone who's working with your ideal client, all the other businesses who are working with your ideal client, and I want you to go to those businesses and offer them a commission on your services for allowing you to pitch to their clients. Now, here's the catch. You have to be able to legally and morally and ethically pay that commission. They have to be able to receive that commission and you have to be transparent with the clients that you're giving them a commission or an affiliate fee. So let's say you want to meet someone and you sell copiers and you're just getting started selling copiers. You go to the office supply salesperson and you say, we have 50 clients in common. I will give you 20% of everything that I sell in the next three months if you introduce me to all your clients. All you need to do is make the introduction. We'll explain to them that we're partnering together to get my business started. They'll understand that you're getting paid a commission for introducing me. And whatever I sell them, I'll give you 20%. If you're an independent business professional and you're just starting your business, Paying these commissions to access people's list on an unlimited basis is the fastest way to grow your business. Rather than invest in expensive advertising, rather than invest in all kinds of direct mail and email and targeted social media advertising, all those things are great, but the fastest way to start a business is to pay someone a commission for accessing their list. I have seen certain businesses pay a commission of up to 80% of the first sale to gain access to those customers. Who does this? People who are in a repeat product or service business. So let's say you're starting a telecommunications business and you want to connect with all the business owners in the area. You go to everyone who sold them other stuff from the guy who provides the water to the office, the big water jugs, to the person who provides office supplies, to real estate people. And you can offer them 60%, 70% commission on the first month of telecommunication spending along with 20% of the equipment install. Why would you do that? Because you know people are gonna be with you if they, if they invest in your system for five to 10 years. And you're gonna get that commission for five to 10 years. So giving them 20% of the install and 60% or 70% of the first month commission and then 10% of every month thereafter is a huge win for you because they're gonna work hard to get their clients to switch to you. I want you to think about that as you're looking to grow your business. 
This is the fastest way to jumpstart business in a new market segment. It's the fastest way to improve your cash flow, and it's the fastest way to start a new business. So those are the benefits of strategic alliance partnerships. I hope you take advantage of these because there is money to be found in connecting with other people who are servicing the clients that you want to service. My name is Dave Lorenzo. This is the Dave Lorenzo Daily, and we're here every day with a great new sales strategy. Until I see you back here again tomorrow, I hope you do this and sell more.